I feel, and perhaps you'll agree with me, that the Irish people deserve better. They deserve a fair, open and transparent contest for the highest office of this land. One that helps us all work out with clarity the kind of society that we want. This contest must help to deliver a different hour, where human rights and the inclusion of people from the margins of society are given the priority that they deserve. I want to set out clearly for the Irish people my vision for this country. Shame of Ring Lloyd, it is my dream that by placing human rights at the heart of my campaign, by inviting people in from the margins of society, that I can use the office of president to effect the changes that we all know in our hearts are right for this country. The facts of the matter are that um, in 1994 uh, I was abroad and I contracted an illness. Uh, I didn't know what it was at the time. I was quite unwell. And when I returned to Ireland, I spent some weeks in hospital uh, under medical care. And it turned out that what I had got was a hepatitis. Non-A, non-B, non-C. But it is, of course, quite a serious liver condition that has to be managed. And one of the side effects is that it drains your energy. I've been very happy to do my two jobs. I always loved teaching in Trinity. And I also loved being a member of the Rockers, which was a great uh, privilege. But I was medically advised uh, that it was not possible for me to undertake uh, the stress of the very intensive uh, lecturing and tutorial uh, duties that I had. <coughs> And in addition to my academic duties, I was also a college tutor, which means looking after the welfare of a chamber of 80 pupils. Uh, this situation continued for a year, and I was then invited to a meeting in Trinity, where the university authorities indicated that they had found this situation untenable. Uh, and I asked them what they suggested. And they proposed uh, that because of my illness, I should um, go on what they called permanent disability. I have on a number of occasions since my nomination as a presidential candidate been asked by sections of the media to disclose all letters written by me in support of Ezra Now. His crime was committed in the early 1990s. A complaint was not made until some years later. Ezra Nawi made admissions when interviewed by the police and pleaded guilty. He was ultimately sentenced to three months imprisonment after a trial in 1997. The case was a complex one. I wrote a letter to the appeal court which ultimately determined his case. This letter has already been published. I wrote a number of other letters to lawyers who acted on his behalf, which mainly dealt with issues arising in the case. I included reference to my own experience in the Irish courts and gave advice and made suggestions that I thought might be helpful in the running of the case. I have taken advice from an Israeli legal firm, Avitan Coronel Solicitors, who have indicated that under Israeli law, nothing may be published about proceedings in a closed trial without the approval of the court. Their advice is that any attempt to publish documents exchanged between a lawyer and a client are from a person on behalf of a client, where that person is acting on behalf of the client, or where the correspondence shows the exchange of information with third parties for the purpose of future, lit future litigation is strictly confidential for the benefit of Ezra now in Israeli law. And any attempt to publish will leave me open to recourse in the Israeli courts by any person affected by the publication. 